I'm deeply invested in Apple ecosystem and my MacBook Pro is the Apex device which literally helps me run this channel. I've tried and tested multiple accessories for my Mac over the years in various different categories and these are my favorite picks based on my usage, value for money, etc. This is going to be a very useful video. Let's go. Let's start with the monitor. The 14 inch MacBook Pro I have well has only a 14 inch screen. This is not great for productivity and video editing. So I use an external monitor to improve my productivity. The one I have been using is a pretty old model but has been working flawlessly for me over many years so I feel I can recommend it wholeheartedly without a doubt. It's the Dell 27 inch 4K monitor. The model is called SQ2721QS. The 21 means it's a 2021 model which is when I got it but very reliable, sharp, acceptable color accuracy and filled with features, especially for this price. You can get it for less than $230 today and for the price, it's a monitor of amazing value. At the same point, I want to upgrade to a more color accurate monitor, which is only one small downside. My MacBook Pro screen is pretty color accurate and when I move a video between MacBook screen and this monitor, I can see a color shift evidently. It's definitely not a deal breaker for me at this price, but at the same time, I want to upgrade upgrade to a more color accurate 4k monitor next keyboard i'm gonna share two favorites of mine here first the ultra cheap ultra portable and perfectly functional logitech k380 bluetooth keyboard the battery life on this thing is insane i don't even remember the last time i changed the batteries on this thing maybe like a year ago very compact and can connect to multiple devices using the shortcuts above so i use it with my macbook pro with one connection when i hit that shortcut at top it switches to my ipad and now I can seamlessly use it with my iPad too. I can switch back and forth so easily. Since it's super small and portable, I can carry it everywhere. The best part is the cost is only $35. I think I got it on a deal for less than $30 if I remember correctly. The only downside, the keys can be a little more tactile and more comfortable to type on. That's why I got this Apple Magic Keyboard, which is going to be my second favorite keyboard. As I said, the only downside with the Logitech K380 is the lack of tactile keys and that's exactly what's good about the Apple Magic Keyboard. I've tried mechanical keyboards and they aren't my thing. I need a low travel silent keyboard where I can type large documents and scripts effortlessly. This Magic Keyboard is so easy to type large documents on with good accuracy and speed. It's the same size as the Logitech Keyboard and is built like a tank. But unfortunately, it doesn't do well on other categories like battery life and switching between devices easily. The battery life on this sucks. I use the Apple Keyboard for typing large scripts and docs and the Logitech K380 for everything else. How about the mouse and trackpad? Apple trackpad on the MacBook Pro is just awesome, glides like a knife over butter. So I got the Apple Magic Keyboard in white. When I edit videos, scrolling the timeline is such a breeze with this trackpad. Gestures, clicks, scrolling, everything is just awesome. One of my top accessories for MacBook for sure. My 14 inch MacBook Pro has a smaller trackpad than the 16. So this external trackpad works perfectly well for me. I used to use the Logitech MX Master Mouse with my old Mac Mini, but I didn't feel the need for a mouse over this trackpad. So I'm using the mouse less and less often these days. But if you are particular about the mouse, the MX Master 3S is a great mouse. A little pricey, but totally worth it. Next, charging. What to talk about charging? It comes with a 100 watt MagSafe charger in the box, right? But would you believe I have never used it so far? I have two different ways of charging my device. First, when I'm using my MacBook as a laptop, which I do very often, I use this portable power bank and power station from Aohi or Ohai. I don't know how to pronounce it the right way, but this is one awesome accessory. It's called the Ohai Starship Power Bank. They did send this charger to me to check it out, but I'm really impressed so far. It's a power bank and power station combined into one. It's a massive 40,000 mAh battery pack. Not just that, it can deliver power up to 140 watts. This is perfect for charging my MacBook Pro 14 inch at full speed, close to two full charges. And of course, I can also use it to charge my iPad and my iPhones parallelly while I charge my laptop. So when I'm editing on my kitchen counter, which does not have an outlet close by, I do not have to run long dangling wires from far, but use this portable power bank for instant power. It also has a unique display which shows the battery capacity, input charging speed and output charging speed if I have any connected devices as well. My favorite part is that it can work as a power station too, which means I can connect 
connect the power bank to an outlet and connect my laptop, iPad and iPhone to this power bank. It will charge all my devices and charge itself to 100% and it is ready to use for the next time. It's sturdy, beautifully designed, charges my iPhone alone for 8 times and comes in a very beautiful package too. I'll leave a link to this power bank and everything else in the description if you want to check it out. Okay, I said two ways of charging my laptop. One is the portable charger when using it as a laptop on my kitchen counter or on lap. What's the other way? Well, when I'm using it for productivity, when I want to use it with multiple monitors and SSDs, I use it with an external docking station. The one I use is called the Tobin One USB-C dock. So when I connect this one cable to my laptop, it charges my laptop, extends my display to my external monitor, connects my external SSDs for more storage, charge my phone with power delivery and give me more ports for SD cards and Ethernet cable. This really transforms my portable MacBook laptop to a fully fleshed high-end productivity setup. I've made a whole video about this docking station and I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check it out for more details. Next, external SSD. This is one very important accessory and I cannot emphasize enough. Video production is my primary workflow and I need at least a couple of terabytes of disk for my needs. Apple storage prices are exorbitant so I use a few different ways to expand my storage. For a simple run and gun setup when I need some additional space easily, I use the SanDisk 1TB external SSD. Its plug and play has been very reliable for many years now and it's super portable when I travel. Easy recommendation. For cases when I need more speed and more storage like if I have to edit directly off an external drive. I have two DIY solutions. I got a M.2 NVMe SSD. I think this is two terabytes. I also got an enclosure attached it myself and I'm getting speeds equaling the internal SSD on my MacBook. I can edit directly. It's fast and works perfectly. Not so portable to be honest. In fact, I have two of them concatenated the disks and I'm getting twice the speed of my internal SSD on my MacBook. If you want an in-depth tutorial on how to get the 2x speeds using external SSD, I also have a full video on that. Link in the description below. Last one, headphones. I've tried a few different ways for audio like the MacBook internal speakers, Samsung Buds, Bose noise cancelling headphones and more. But I finally settled with the AirPods, not the AirPods Pro, the basic AirPods. I do have the AirPods Pro, but I prefer the basic ones for two reasons. One, since I work in a quiet environment for most part, I do not need noise cancelling. And second, the AirPods Pro have a silicone tip for tight sealing, whereas the AirPods have an open ear sort of design. So it's easy on my ears, especially when wearing it for extended hours. In fact, this is a second generation AirPods, which is half the price as the Pro model. And I've been perfectly happy about it. Those are my favorite accessories for my MacBook Pro which I regularly use. I also use my iPad as a secondary display and for some drawing and YouTube thumbnail stuff along with my MacBook. What is your favorite accessories for MacBooks? Let me know in the comments below. Also like and subscribe to the channel if this was interesting. I'll see you all in the next one. This is Anjana. Bye bye.